Hi all, Tony here from Immortality IMT, Cryptocurrency for the Longevity Field. Today we have Financial Review, Billionaires Embrace Crypto in Case Money Goes to Hell. So here we see that the wealthiest people in the world have actually changed their point of view and are now embracing crypto. Well, a lot of them are. As it seems that when crypto was still new and they first heard about it, they were skeptical at first, but as time goes on and they learn more about it, they just basically include it as part of their financial reality. Billionaires embrace crypto in case money goes to hell. Thomas Peter Fee took out a full-page ad in the Wall Street Journal in 2017, warning of the dangers that Bitcoin futures pose to capital markets. These days, the Hungarian-born billionaire is well-versed in crypto speak. Peter Fee, worth $25 billion, said it's prudent to have 2% or 3% of one's personal wealth in cryptocurrencies just in case fiat goes to hell. He owns some himself, while his firm Interactive Brokers Group Inc., recently offered customers the ability to trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash after detecting urgency from its clients to get in on the action. Peter Fee 77 said Greenwich Connecticut based interactive brokers will offer the ability to trade another 5 to 10 coins or so starting this month. And he's also getting on it in age. He should invest in Immortality IMT, cryptocurrency for the longevity field as he's not getting any younger, that $25 billion is going to be, he's not going to be able to enjoy that for much longer if he doesn't invest in immortality IMT. It's possible that cryptocurrencies could reap extraordinary returns even if the opposite is also true, Peter Fee said. I think it can go to zero, and I think it can go to a million dollars, he said in an interview. I have no idea. His approach highlights the shifting attitude towards crypto by investors who once scorned or were weary of digital tokens, but realised, especially in 2021, that they can't bear to miss out on the potential for big returns. Or maybe they know what's coming in, what's in store for the fiat currencies. You know, these guys uh, tend to be able to get more information, but the more money they have, so maybe they know what's in store for the fiat currency, and they've said, maybe Bitcoin's another hedge. Even as prices swung wildly, investors large and small dipped into Bitcoin and Ethereum as well as non-fungible tokens, dog-themed assets and shit coins, including the aptly named Ascoin. <laughs> it's funny. The financial view has no problem calling them shit coins. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ray Dalio recently revealed he was holding at least some Bitcoin and Ethereum in his portfolio only months after questioning crypto's utility as a store of wealth. Dalio, 72, said he wants to begin the third phase of his life. Now, Dalio has another one should, they should invest in immortality, IMT. Cryptocurrency for the longevity field. He's another rich guy. These are old rich guys. You know, it takes some years to make a whole lot of money. But once you get there, you're getting older. Okay. If you want your life extension longevity field uh, investment to stay younger for as long as possible and to extend your life for as long as possible. But they just don't know it yet. You know, it's a whole new world. The Bridgewater Associates founder views the investments as an alternative money in the world share. Cash is trash and inflation erodes buying power. Paul Duda Jones disclosed he invested as a hedge against inflation and almost half the family offices Gold Sachs does business with were interested in adding digital currencies to their portfolio, according to a recent bank survey. Crypto moved increasingly into the mainstream of finance, albeit with mixed success. Proche has launched the first US Bitcoin futures ETF, which tracked more than $1 billion in two days before inflow sputtered and the price slumped since October debut. Crypto enthusiasts are still hoping US regulators approve an ETF that actually holds Bitcoin in 2022. Faring better, Coinbase went public and is now a $54 billion market valuation. Its founder, Brian Armstrong, 
is worth 9.7 billion according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Now Brian Armstrong's into longevity. He's one of the new the new types. And the new types are all into longevity. You know, Vitalik Buterin, uh, Charles Hoskinson from Cardano, Buterin from Ethereum, Brian Armstrong from Coinbase. They're all into longevity. But uh, these guys from Wall Street, they're uh, they're not in, they're starting to learn about longevity. So um, they should also have. Uh, some shares in life extension, longevity uh, operations, i.e. immortality, IMT, cryptocurrency. How should they see it? Well, that's a side project for them. You know what I mean? They they are investing with the view to get access to the technologies, have somebody on the side building their, um, their clinic and their lab where they will go and get their therapies done. It was also a period when crypto collided with culture and NFT from people sold for 69.3 million at Christie's. Tom Brady released NFTs tied to his legendary career, while Katy Perry Grimes at the agency behind K-pop sensation BTS all sought to profit from the burgeoning industry. El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukali, even made Bitcoin legal tender in his country. Everybody starts off sceptical. They eventually get onto the idea, they eventually accept the idea and they eventually are fine with the idea. I mean, why does the government have to destroy it? Why is the government the only one in the end that seeks to destroy crypto? Just, it's just, it's just counterproductive. Katy Perry is another one that should invest in immortality IMT, Grimes. Because Katy Perry's getting older. The crypto marketing juggernaut will keep going in 2022. Staples Center in Los Angeles is now Crypto.com Arena, while FTX and Singapore's Crypto.com are running ads during the Super Bowl, even if prices don't necessarily climb to the moon. Michael Novogratz, who runs Galaxy Digital, said last month that prices could go sideways to down. In the near term, there was a lot of froth in the markets in 2021. Nova Gratz told Bloomberg as retail investors piled into NFTs and pursued unusual crypto investments. The New York-based digital evangelist also predicted Bitcoin won't fall below the floor of about 42,000 to close the year at about 46,300. The suspicion is these ETFs are beginning to be able to manipulate Bitcoin given if the <clears throat> if the ETF has a fund of a billion dollars, it could probably move the price up and down a certain extent. And that's probably only going to increase, which likely would mean, if that is true, likely it would mean we're going to have a Bitcoin that's controlled by a fund. So much money is pouring into this space, it would make no sense if crypto prices would go much lower than that Novograd stated. Jesse Powell, Chief Executive Officer of Crypto Exchange Kraken. Well, he's not into, he needs to get into longevity as well. Jesse Powell, Chief Executive Officer of Crypto Exchange Kraken, acknowledges prices could fall, but said on Bloomberg TV on December 14 that any move below 40,000 is a buying opportunity. He's quick to admit he's not always got it right. In August, he predicted prices would reach 100,000 a coin in 2021. ARK Investment Management Kathy Wood, meanwhile, still expects Bitcoin to reach 500,000 and said last month that it isn't necessarily due for a correction. I wonder what Kathy Wood thinks about longevity. There's still skepticism from Wall Street and the ultra-wealthy, but also pragmatism. Citadel's Ken Griffin recently described the rush to embrace cryptocurrency as a jihadist call against the US dollar. But Griffin said his own firm would trade crypto if there was more regulation. JP Morgan Chase Jamie Dimon called Bitcoin worthless in October. But that came even as the New York-based banking giant was bulking up, hiring to help its client trade cryptocurrencies. 
bank's clients are adults, Diamond has said. Bloomberg Wealth. These are just these are just benevolent attitudes. Just goes to show that uh, billionaires are no better at money than anyone else, and that they're no better at making decisions than anyone else, and they're no better at understanding the world than anyone else. <clears throat> okay, that was billionaires embrace crypto in case money goes to hell. Immortality IMT, cryptocurrency for the longevity field. We've got a field on our hands. It's an emerging field. Everyone who's anybody is investing in longevity. Head on down to the website and buy some tokens. Okay, bye-bye.